Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> yeah. Founded in 1961 by Raymond Cook, KEF or KEF has always been known as a high-end home audio manufacturer. I bet many of you wondering if this is an acronym, and yes it is, Kent Engineering and Foundry, and it's named after its location, Southeast England. Always wonder, is there a British Southern accent? There's a thin line between comedy and humor. Probably best known for the UniQ drivers, which integrated the tweeter inside of the voice coil of the woofer, started back in 1988 with the Generation 1. They've made many advancements over the years and moved this down to their even their budget line speakers. The bookshelf speakers is shown here with a five and a quarter or six and a half inch mid-range with the tweeter integrated. These are their most affordable speakers, but they also have some that are not quite so affordable. These nineteen thousand dollar reference fives. And if you really have the extra change, try these two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar muons. That's right. Save a little bit of that tax money and get you some. In the 1990s, a lot of the high-end home audio manufacturers, such as Macintosh, noticed the car audio market had some room there, maybe to fit some of their products. KEF also first introduced some of their speakers back in the mid-90s, and then around 1997, I found this article where they talked about amplifiers that they were designing that were coming out soon, and it mentioned Acoustic and Rich Co. Again, I'm not sure if... These amps were actually designed by Rich Co. or if this article just kind of talked about him because Acoustic and Kef at the time were owned by the same parent company. So I did run this by Steve Ravinsky, who was the marketing director back around 1993 to 96, and he wasn't aware of any of the amplifiers that may have been coming out. But these amplifiers didn't hit the market until about 1998, as shown here, with this advertisement from a car audio magazine which talks about the car audio subwoofer 100 watt amplifier with a thousand watt IHF capability. So let's look in the 1998 car audio and electronics. And yes, we can see the KA202 100 by two is $1,200 listed in here for MSRP. The car stereo review also lists the KA202 and the KA102, two different models of the KEF amplifiers. Once I found out Kef made amplifiers, I was on a mission to be able to find one. Now, this one showed up in an eBay auction in Italy. And yes, I did pay some extra to win this amplifier and to have it shipped from Italy. But I figured out, you know what? This thing is so rare, so cool that you guys would want to see it. Came with the manual for the KA202 and the KA102. I've actually already scanned this manual and sent it to Kef so they could have it in their archives. So if you need this, just let me know. I can send it or leave a link in the video description. It did come with one screw that was out of the amp, but everything here looked almost perfect. I don't think the amp was ever used. I don't even think it might have been taken out of the package once, but uh, overall, this amplifier is perfect. It has insert terminals for the speakers as well as the power ground and remote as well as 240 amp fuses. On the opposite side, it has a fan, which is active, which runs all the time, a switch for balance in or out. The four RCAs here show the connections for balanced inputs. You also have the option to just use standard single-ended RCAs, but the balance input requires the KE2 crossover, which facilitates that balance connection for the lowest noise floor as well as the best sound quality. Now on the top of the amp, there are sensitivity adjustments and they are individual for the right and left channel. So we made sure we matched that before we did the dyno test. As far as dimensions, 15.5 on the long side, 9.8 for the width, two inches for the height, millimeter equivalents are there as well. As far as ratings go, it's a two channel amp rated 100 by two at four ohms, 200 by two at two ohms. Mono, it's rated 400 watts into four ohms and 650 into two ohms mono. So that means it is a one ohm stereo stable amp if it's stable to two ohms mono. We will do all those tests. Now, if you've never seen the amp dyno test before, on the left, you'll see the RMS power output in watts. The middle, you'll see the ohm load. The right, you'll see the voltage of the dyno. We'll also show the remote display so we can calculate the efficiency of the amplifier. 
First up, we'll do the two channel test at one kilohertz. These are the stereo tests. We do have each channel going into a separate channel in the dyno. Rated 100 watts by two, this will simulate two four ohm speakers like you know your component system or your six by nine, something like that. Certified test takes us up to 1% distortion. This amp is rated at 12 volts and very low distortion, so we easily got 172 and 170 watts. That's right, this amp is boss mode. It knows how to do its power, does it cleanly, and let's uh, try the different test here. Uncertified up to clipping. Let's try the four ohm stereo test here, and we get 175 and 175. Love how those channels match, which is not normal for a stereo amplifier. You usually have a little bit of difference based on component tolerances and such. So this is a very well matched amplifier. Dynamic, RMS power, one kilohertz. This simulates the IHF 202 test at 14.4 volts, 173 and 172. Now let's check out that efficiency. This is a class AB amplifier, so it's not gonna be very efficient as shown here, 55%. But people who want good sound quality know you have to sacrifice your efficiency for sound quality. 2 ohm stereo rated 200 watts by 2. That's like paralleling two 4 ohm speakers per channel. Let's try the certified test first. Rated 200 watts by 2. Whoa, 329 and 322. And Kef's over here just shaking their groove thing. Like, yep, that's us. We cool. We got it. We throw down the power. And we're going to show you some more. Let's run uncertified up to clipping at 2 ohm stereo. See how much power we get. And yes, well above 300, 336 and 332. Again, we're above 14 volts. They tested it according to the manual at 12 volts, but uh, you know we're providing more juice here so we can see how much power this amp does. Here we go dynamically, one kilohertz, 329 and 320, right at 14.3 volts. What about the efficiency when we go to two ohm mode? 53%, so it didn't drop significantly from the four ohm test, which is good. Now let's bridge the amp mono and try the test at 40 hertz so we can simulate using subwoofers. And you can see here, use the left positive and right negative to bridge the amp. And it's rated 400 watts. And the simulation here is a single four ohm subwoofer. This is old school stuff. This is how they used to be. Or two eight ohm subwoofers wired in parallel also gives you four ohms. Once again, certified test is first up to 1% total harmonic distortion. And there you go, 467 at 14.34. So easily got its rated power, uh, but we're quite a bit above the 12 volts that it's rated at. Let's try uncertified up to clipping and check this out. She keeps going 610 watts up to clipping at 14.15 volts. Clipping is what you would be interested in with running a subwoofer because 1% doesn't really mean much for subs. Dynamic power, the burst power, here we go, 685 watts at 14.13. Efficiency though dropped because of the 40 hertz tone, 43% efficient. Now what about this overall results? You can see here all the different tests the amp performed above its rated specs. And to be as old as it is, it's pretty impressive. This is a rare amp. If you want to see more tests, make sure you stick around to the very end. Now let's find out, does it do sound quality? This is YouTube, so take it for what it's worth. Let's play some tunes. Let's get some SQ action going with the Smoke Jacket Blues YouTube Audio Library. Here's a good one for the bass track, Back Rub. Now let's speed through the 20 minutes it took me to take this amplifier apart so we can see the interior, see them amp guts. Here we go.
As you can see, the way the bottom panels kind of went over each side, we had to take quite a few screws apart. But for you guys, you know we're going to do it so you can see what's inside. Beautifully laid out amplifier. You can see the copper circuit board in here. It's four millimeters thick. It does have this KEF here on the center made in the USA. It has a part number, all that good stuff. Check out this. Beautiful Elna caps, 2200 microfarad, 35 volts for power supply. And Elna makes great capacitors for those who don't know. For the rails, we have the Phillips 4700 microfarad, 50 volts. Not really sure why they went with Phillips other than they might be blue and look good in the amp. But um, those probably should be replaced as well as the power supply capacitors because this amp is quite a bit, quite a few years old. As far as output, C. 3519s and the complimentary A1386s. These are Sankin transistors, very nice Japanese made transistors. On the power supply side, they utilize the TO247 IRFP054Ns, four per channel for the power supply side. These are in channel MOSFETs, so this is a MOSFET power supply on this beautifully laid out amplifier. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. Things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. Things I like first, Rated Power Plus, Rarity, Uniqueness, yes, <laughs> you won't see another one of these most likely. Class AB for your purest, Quality Components, it's a pure game block, has no crossovers, nothing like that built in. Single-ended or balanced inputs, it does have active cooling as well with the fan. On to the cons, Inefficient as a Class AB amplifier, has standard non-Tiffany RCAs, 8-gauge power, 12-gauge speaker for the connections. This thing is uber rare, and 80 amps of fusing is not really enough, and you'll find that out later if you stick around to the very end of the video. Here you have the KEF for KEF KA202, shown to you here, Wilson Audio Labs. I doubt you will see another one of these ever in your life, and if you do, it won't be as nice as this one. So appreciate you guys watching here in beautiful 4K. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of people that watch my channel that aren't subscribed, and that would help me out a ton if you'll subscribe, smash a thumbs up, leave me a comment below. I appreciate you guys, as always, for watching. Until next time, this is Big D. You know where I'm at. I'm out of here. Thanks, as always, for sticking around to the end. We are going to try the one ohm run here with the amp in the stereo mode and check this out 478 457 but also check out how much current we pulled 147 amps of current through 80 amps of fusing that's right we got some super stretch fuses in this amplifier they didn't pop either which is hard to believe uncertified up to clipping one ohm one kilohertz stereo test and here we go 478 and 460 at 13.9 volts. Now let's try the dynamic test. One ohm stereo, one kilohertz, IHF202 test. And there we go, we got over our 1100 watts. It says a thousand watts dynamically, but uh, yeah, we got well over 1100, about 1150 watts total dynamically at one ohm. Now, as far as the two ohm mono run, what I decided to do here is just really run the dynamic test and not do the certified and uncertified because I thought it would pop the fuses and I really didn't want to harm this amplifier. But 40 hertz test first, I did 974 watts dynamically at 14.17. But then I thought, you know what, maybe we should switch it over and try the one kilohertz track. So here we go, one kilohertz, two ohms bridge mono, and let's see what we get. Yes, well over 1100, almost 1200 watts. 1183 at 14.30. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I know it's cold outside, but we got to try that slide. You know how them sound waves go? Yeah.